Hello, welcome back to another Armored Warfare replay. I am your host, the Mighty Bjorn, and today I have for you myself in the M8 Buford and the Red Queen, who is running her Merkava Mark III. And we are on PvE Hardcore. This is Operation Onyx. Let's throw some stuff out here about the M8 Buford. And there's quite a bit of information for this vehicle, which is there's actually quite interesting. Um, first off, the M8 Buford is a light tank, uh, light tank developed to replace the M551A1 Sheridans in the 82nd Airborne and to replace the tow equipped Humvees. Tow means tube launched, optically tracked, wire guided. However, the M8 project would later be canceled in 1997. The design process of the M8 AGS Black Company, don't let cartel forces would begin in 1992. A total of six prototypes would be built and company. designated as XM8. It looks like the cartel has some SATCOM trucks trying to download intel from servers that may or may not be on that train. Uh, AGS. Destroy those trucks before they steal our intel and I'll throw in a bonus check. The XM8 would later be classified as M8 by the U.S. Army in 1995. Destroyed. and was initially to start production in 1996. However, the M8 would end up being cancelled for other projects. However, this would not be the end of the M8. A contract uh, was awarded in 2018 to VAE Systems along with General Dynamics by the U.S. Army as part of the Mobile Protection Firepower Program. Identify. The task is to create an air transportable light tank to assist infantry brigades for force entry operations. VAE would submit an upgraded M8 with new capabilities and components. Identify. So far, a 12, uh, total of 12 prototypes uh, have been ordered and uh, are to begin trials in the spring of 2020 with the selection uh, by uh, 2022 and hopes of the first 504 M8s to be delivered and ready for service by 2025. So far, the M8 Buford has one variant which is the M8 Thunderbolt 2. Only one Thunderbolt 2 has been produced and it was demonstrated in 2003. Uh, the M8 features a 105 millimeter rifled XM35 gun with an autoloader. It has a coaxial M240C, 7.62 millimeter machine gun and a pintle mounted uh, 12.7 millimeter M2 machine gun. It weighs at 19 tons with its welded aluminum alloy armor. However, there's upgrade packages for the M8. And what you see here is actually the level 3 protection kit, making the M8 weigh a total of 24.75 tons. Uh, so it gets quite a bit heavier. Uh, there's also a level 2 kit, which it, it adds about another uh, 2 tons from the original 19.25 millimeter tons. Uh, it features a DDC 6V92 TIA engine pushing out 580 horsepower. It is crewed by a commander, a gunner, a driver. Now to point out here that the M8 Thunderbolt 2 features a 100 and 20 millimeter smooth bore gun versus a 105 millimeter rifle gun. Uh, now, the variant model, the uh, Thunderbolt 2, I'm still working towards, that is actually featured at tier 9 on this line. Uh, what you see here is the M8 Buford, this is fully upgraded. Uh, and I carry a 50 50 mix of heat and armor piercing. Mark um, it down. What I find interesting about the M8, or I don't know if interesting is the proper word, but unusual 
to understand tank development most of the time and this is just about everywhere in the world uh, when a vehicle originally is designed uh, prototypes are produced if the vehicles are not adopted for Watch service they're usually up scrapped they're or put in a museum role. or whatever they're never reintroduced and re-looked at uh, in the case here of the M8 it actually has been reintroduced and re-looked at and possibly going to enter service and even though they're hoping for vehicles in 2025 I'm still going to stick by the it's only a possibility who knows until it actually happens a little rubbing here with Red Queen as I drive past her Macava and my M8. So as you can see here, yeah, it is a fairly oh, light tank in Armored War. It's quite you mobile, it does not take hit uh, very well. However, the gun is Identified fairly on. good for oh, a light okay. tank. Um, you really start to notice the weakness of the 105 millimeter gun by this tier, though. Unfortunately, uh, most vehicles by this tier are packing much more powerful munitions, way of either 105 millimeter guns or whatever. Uh, but as you can see, it, it's pretty rapid fire gun, Identify. so it can keep up. Um, this is more of a sniper. Think of it; it, it should be played more as a TD. I am playing quite aggressively here, um, and, and keeping, actually keeping very close to the action. I'm not just worried about spotting here, I'm also worried about dishing out damage. Or at least as much damage I can without taking hits myself. Getting resets wherever I can get resets on this base cap. Uh, it looks like you've got all the sets coming And just doing, just we'll doing the maximum amount of damage, no matter how it is, either by tracking the enemy tanks or actual damage. Uh, how I feel about it is it, it is actually a stock. It's a pretty crap tank. I really did not like this thing stock. I felt miserable. But once you start to upgrade the ammunition, not so much the kit, the, the armor package, understand, just really doesn't matter. It really doesn't do anything. Uh, it might help protect from some auto cannon fire, but all in all, realistically, at the end of the day, what you need to focus on is your speed, target. Uh, your maneuverability, your vision, and then your gunnery. Um, the armor piercing ammunition is quite competent and, and can easily penetrate some of the heavier MBTs, and even the heat ammunition is pretty good. Awesome. I recommend a 50 50 mix of the and uh, armor piercing, or you can go a little bit heavier with the armor piercing. Um, now, special abilities, this has two special abilities. One, I don't know what it's called, I think it's called rapid fire, and basically you sacrifice a lot of accuracy for spamming rapid fire, uh, just spamming shells out even quicker. Personally, I like the uh, boosting to help overclock the engine and make my tank go faster when I need that extra boost of speed to either get in a position, run away from an enemy, or maybe get ahead of my teammates. Um, and yeah, so there you go. That's the, uh, the Tier 8 M8 light tank. Uh, it's not a bad vehicle. I would definitely recommend people trying to check it out if they're interested in light tanks. Uh, and mind you, light tanks work very good as a cannon-based tank to to So Thank if you don't like those AT, nasty ATGMs, you can always go with uh, the cannon of a light tank. So there you go. There's that replay. And we'll bring up the score here. I did a total of 19,175 damage. I spotted 10 enemy vehicles and actually destroyed 12. So as you can see, it's a quite good rapid-fire gun. Uh, I would actually be number two uh, overall in damage, and uh, I, I wouldn't quite get the top in spotting. But uh, yeah, still not a bad game for the M8. Um, definitely played aggressively and handled it fairly well. Uh, top damage overall would have to go to the Red Queen with her Merkava Mark III. Um, 
So yeah, there you go. There's that game. Hopefully you enjoyed learning the information about the M8 Buford. Um, I've also, I, I'm not quite sure where Buford comes from. I'm actually more acquired to the M8 being called Ridgeway. Uh, I'm not sure if there's anyone else out there like that. Um, and, and one more thing to point out, uh, the movie A-Team, uh, it starred, uh, Liam Neeson and, uh, Bradley Cooper and, uh, Quentin Rampage Jackson also featured the, the tank scene with the, uh, tank, well, the, the tank scene they do in that movie actually features the M8 Buford. So there you go. The, the, the M8 Buford is actually a celebrity, even though it's not even in service yet. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this replay and I will see you again next time.